So in the previous video, I showed you guys how to connect our Python file to our database file. In this video, I'll be showing you guys how to create the tables for our database. So first we need to create the to-do class and this will create the to-do object. Um, this will be the um, to-do table for our database also. So I'm just gonna type some things down and I'll explain it in a bit. So I've created the to-do class, and this will be the ta table in our database. There are two columns for this table, which are the ID and to-do. The ID is the identity column for each to-do, and the to-do is the actual to-do we will enter. The db.column means that this will be a column, and the db.string with a 50 inside of it means that it will be in a string format, and each to-do will have a maximum of 50 characters. The nullable equals to false parameter means that this cannot be empty. Now that we've created the table in our Python file, we need to update these changes into the database. So open up the terminal and type in Python 3, which will bring up the Python console. Next, type in from app import db. This will import the db variable from our app file, then type db.create underscore all. This will create the tables we put in our Python file into our database. To check if they're in the database or not, first you need to exit out of the console using control D or exit with a set of parentheses. Then type in SQLite 3 in our database file name, which is database.db. Once you've typed that and you're into the database, type in dot tables, which will show the tables in our database currently. And if you see the to do table, um, this will basically ensure that we have created the to do table in our database. To exit out, type in dot exit. And we're pretty much done. So um, for this video, I showed you guys how to create the tables in our database. And in the next video, I'll be showing you guys how to. Hello there, everybody. In the previous video, I showed you guys how to create the database and the tables for our Flask app. And in this video, I'll be showing you guys how to create the forms. So first of all, we're going to have to install a few things. And those things are pip3 install wt forms and flask underscore wtf. So once we've installed those, we're going to have to import them. So I'm going to do from flask underscore WTF, import flask form, and then from WT forms, import string field and submit field. And also we're going to have to import some validators. So I'm going to do from WT forms dot validators, import input required. And now we're done with the imports. And also we need to create a secret key for our app. And the secret key is something that we'll be using um, that will be securely signing the session cookie. So here's what we're going to do first. So open up your terminal and then type in Python or Python 3, depending on your operating system. And then type in import UUID and then UUID.UUID4, set of parentheses, dot hex. And then this will generate a hex token, which will be our secret key. And yours might be different because a random one is generated each time. Um, so yeah, right here under our database uh, link right here, we're going to type in app.config secret underscore key, and that will be equal to the hex token that we just generated, and we have configured a secret key. Now since we've con configured the secret key, we're just going to have to create the form. So to do that, we're going to do class to do form, and for this actually, um, we're going to type in flask form. And then to do is going to be equal to string field to do, we'll enter to do, and then validators. So how the um, input is going to be validated, we're going to do input required, meaning that we'll, that the user will have to put something in in order for a to do to be created. And then the length of it will be a minimum of four characters and a maximum of 50 characters, which is the same thing that we've configured in our database right there. And then we're going to type in submit is equal to submit field, which is just a button that we will be clicking in order for the to, to do to be added. Next in our home route, um, you guys need to put this in form is equal to to do form. So it's creating a form variable that is equal to this. And then right here in our render template right here, we're going to type in form is equal to form also. 
This is going to create a variable in our HTML called form, which will be equal to this form, which is equal to this to do form right there. Now, since we've configured everything in Python, we're going to have to configure it in our HTML. And in the HTML, I'm just going to remove this header and I'm going to create a form. So form um, method, we're going to be accepting post requests. So I'm just going to put post and then action, you could just put an empty set of quotation. And then right here, I'm just going to type in form dot hidden underscore tag and then form dot to do and form dot submit. And I'll explain to you guys what this means. So um, what we've done is we've linked our HTML file right here. And this form variable is used right here in form right there. And the form.todo is basically this to do field. And the form.submit is this submit field right here. And we've configured everything in our front end. And I'll just run the server for you guys to see how it looks like. So python3 app.py. And actually, oh, length is not defined. Oh, OK. So we're going to have to, imp I forgot to import length right there. And that's it. So right here, what I'm going to do is uh, python3 app.py right there. And then now since our server is running, we can just go to localhost at port 5000. And here we go. We have a form. So right here, as you can see, we this is our to-do field right here. And then this is our submit field. And to show you guys how this works, I'm going to test out this input required um, validator. So I'm going to type in add to-do. And it's going to say, please fill out this field. And this is basically what it means for the input required. And now since we're done with the forms, uh, in the next video, I'll be showing you guys how to add the forms to the database. Well, add the to-dos to the database, actually.